hi students today i am going to deal the topic liquid chromatography from the chapter mass spectrometry and chromatography today i am going to deal the topic liquid chromatography from the chapter mass spectrometry and chromatography learning objectives upon completion of this presentation you will be able to understand the concepts of liquid chromatography components of liquid chromatography construction and working principle of liquid chromatography types of liquid chromatography paper column and thin layer types advantages and limitations of liquid chromatography and applications of liquid chromatography learning objectives upon completion of this presentation you will be able to understand the concepts of liquid chromatography components of liquid chromatography construction and working principle of liquid chromatography types of liquid chromatography paper column and thin layer advantages and limitations of liquid chromatography and applications of liquid chromatography applications of liquid chromatography liquid chromatography before we deal with liquid chromatography once again we would like to define what is chromatography it is a physical method of separation of the components of a mixture by distribution between two phases that is stationary phase and mobile phase we have two phases in chromatography it is a physical method of separation of the components of a mixture by distribution between two phases that is stationary phase and mobile phase one is a stationary phase of large area and other is a mobile phase which passes along the stationary phase it has two phases stationary phase and mobile phase one is a stationary phase of very large area and other is a mobile phase which passes along the stationary phase so this is chromatography then chromatography is basically classified into two types that is liquid and gas chromatography liquid chromatography and gas chromatography so today i am going to deal the topic liquid chromatography it is a chromatography in which the mobile phase is a liquid as i told you any chromatographic uh, process it has two phases one is the stationary phase and other one is the mobile phase so the mobile phase when it is liquid then that type of chromatography is called liquid chromatography the type of chromatography is called liquid chromatography the oldest of all the chromatographic processes is high pressure liquid high pressure liquid chromatography it is the oldest of all and it is similar to gas chromatography but the process is carried out through a liquid form by a solvent it is carried out through a liquid in liquid form by a solvent so it is said to be liquid chromatography where the mobile phase is a liquid where the mobile phase is a liquid the block diagram of liquid chromatography the basic block of any chromatography technique is we have the mobile phase supply system the pump and the programmer the sample valve then you have the column which is maintained at a specific temperature by a thermostatic control and then we have the data uh, the detector after the chromatographic column after the process is going on uh, the different components uh, are detected by a detector and the detector will give you a signal which may be either in the digital form or analog form it may be converted into an analog uh, in a, into an digital form the analog signal can be converted into a digital signal so you have the first and the foremost uh, a uh, block of your uh, chromatography is the mobile phase system the mobile phase supply system in other words the mobile phase supply system which comprises of the mobile phase supply system the pump and the programmer the sample valve then these three together they the signal the sample is introduced into the column the column is the heart of the chromatography and you have the detector and the recorder and the data processing unit the data acquisition and processing unit and finally it is given to the 
printer for the printout. So the block diagram consists of mobile phase system, pump and the programmer. Then we have the sample valve, then we have the column with the and thermostatic uh, control, then we have the detector and recorder and data processing and printer. So components of liquid chromatography are the components of liquid chromatography are the mobile phase system, the mobile phase system, then we have the pump and the programmer, the sample valve, the column, the detector and the recorder and the data processing and the printer, data processing and the printer. So, there are the six components of a liquid chromatography are mobile phase system, pump and the programmer, sample valve, the column, the detector and recorder and the data processing and printer, data processing and printer. So, I would like to give you a brief explanation of the different components of the liquid chromatography. The pressure pump, the liquid chromatography, it requires a pressure up to 600 atmospheres. It requires a pressure up to 600 atmospheres. The liquid is pumped at a high pressure into the chromatographic column using a piston type pump. The position is moved using a motor. The pressure and the flow rate of the solvent is controlled by a suitable mechanism. It is controlled by a suitable mechanism. So, liquid chromatograph requires a pressure, that pressure should be up to 600 atmospheres. The liquid is pumped at a high pressure into the chromatographic column using a piston type pump, using a piston type pump. The position is moved using a motor, the position is moved using a motor. The pressure and the flow rate of the solvent is controlled by a suitable mechanism. So, the liquid column chromatography, the liquid is pumped at a very high pressure of 600 atmospheres into the chromatographic column, into the heart of the chromatography. So, using a piston type pump, the position is moved using the motor. The pressure and the flow rate of the solvent is controlled by a suitable mechanism. Then the second part, important part or the heart of the uh, chromatographic system is your chromatographic column. Since the performance of the chromatograph is determined largely by the column, this is very, very important. The diameter of the column is in the range of 0.1 to 0.2 centimeters and the length is 1 to 4 meters long. The diameter is 0.1 to 0.2 centimeters. And the length is 1 to 4 meters long. The columns are packed with particles of diameter less than 10 microns. Less than 10 microns. So, the column is packed with a material which is uh, less than, whose diameters are less than 10 microns. The chromatographic column are operated at a high temperature up to 250 degrees centigrade. Hence, the columns are placed in temperature controlled oven. So, remember you in the block diagram we have seen the chromatographic column and thermostat. So, the temperature of the column is, uh, is controlled by an oven. It is controlled by an oven. So, the chromatographic column is the most important part of the chromatographic system. The performance of the chromatograph is determined largely by the column. The diameter of the column is in the range of 0.1 to 0.2 centimeters and the length is 1 to 4 meters long. The columns are packed with particles of diameter about 10 microns, less than 10 microns. The chromatographic columns are operated at high temperatures up to 250 degree centigrade. Hence, the columns are placed in a temperature controlled oven. Hence, the columns are placed in a, ten in a temperature controlled oven. The columns are placed in a temperature controlled oven. Temperature controlled oven. Then your detectors. The detectors that are used in liquid chromatography, the detection system senses the components 
emerging from the column and produces a signal which is proportional to the amount of it amount of solute in the sample amount of solutes in the sample it produces a signal to the which is proportional to the amount of solutes in the sample the various detectors used for liquid chromatography are uv spectrometer fluorescence detector electrical conductivity detector and thermal detector so the first part is your sample injection system where the sample liquid sample at high pressure of 600 atmospheres is introduced into the column then you are having the chromatographic column which is packed with uh, uh, particles which are less than 10 microns and diameter 1 to uh, the uh, and its uh, diameter is uh, about uh, less than 10 microns the co column length is 1 to 4 meters long and its diameter ranges between 0.1 to 0.2 centimeters the chromatographic columns are operated at a very high temperature of 250 degrees centigrade and the column is placed in a thermostatic uh, control and it is placed in an oven whose temperature is controlled so the performance of the uh, chromatography depends upon the column depends upon the chromatographic column then your detection system we are using uh, the detection system senses the components which are emerging from the column and produces a signal proportional to the amounts of the solute in the sample. The various detectors used in chromo liquid chromatography are UV spectrometers, fluorescence detectors, electrical conductivity detectors and thermal detectors are used. Thermal detectors are used. These are the various types of detectors used in liquid chromatography liquid chromatography so as i told you it the oldest of the chromatographic process is the high performance liquid chromatography high performance hplc it is called as high performance liquid chromatography you can see in the picture very clearly the first stage is what uh, in the block diagram we have seen mobile phase supply system here as I told you liquid chromatography the mobile phase is a liquid so you are you are taking the mobile phase the liquid in a in a container that is called the solvent solvent that is the mobile phase resolve, reservoir so the solvent is pumped into the column into the column how it is pumped by using a uh, solvent manager or solvent delivery system the pump which delivers the solvent you you are you're using a motor a motor is used to pump the solvent into the uh, column at a very high pressure of 600 atmospheres before it is pumped it is mixed with the sample you have a sample injection system or you can see in the figure auto sampler or sample manager it is called just less pump solvent manager we have the sample manager also uh, it injects the sample along with the along with the solvent or both together they enter the chromatographic column they enter the hpcl column it is called packing material is used inside high pressure liquid chromatographic column after the chromatographic process is uh, uh, after the so solvent and the sample under test is processed you get an output which is detected by a suitable detector we have different types of detectors as i told you uv the spectrometer or fluorescence detector or electrical conductor conductivity detector or thermal detectors these are the diff different detectors that are used and the detector will give you an output system output uh, either it is in the digital or analog form either it is in the digital or analog form the output of the detector will be connected to a uh, dac system data acquisition system where it can be converted into a digital signal and you can observe the chromatograph chromatogram on the system okay so this is the basic blah, basic diagram schematic diagram of a hplc that is high performance liquid chromatography the operation in a liquid chromatography the mobile phase is a 
high pressure liquid and the stationary phase is a liquid or a solid the stationary case uh, phase can be either a liquid or a solid but uh, the mobile phase will be a liquid high pressure liquid the sample to be analyzed is injected into the high pressure chromatographic column by using a syringe as we have seen there we have the uh, sample injection system there so the sample is to, that is to be analyzed is injected into the high pressure chromatographic column by using a syringe this sample is made to move throughout the column by using high pressure liquid the sample is made to move throughout the column by using high pressure liquid so the chromatographic column is maintained at an elevated temperature of about 250 degrees centigrade so the various components of the sample are fractioned during their passage through the column so what is what is happening the various components of the sample they are fractioned during the passage through the column so the detection system senses these components as they elute from the column and produces a signal proportional to the amount of solutes passing through the detection system so what does the detection system do the detection system it senses these components as they elute from the, the it senses these components as they elute from the column and produces a signal proportional to the amount of the solute passing through the detection system passing through the detection system passing through the detection system so the detection system it senses the components as they elute from the column and produces a signal and proportional to the amount of solute passing through the detection system passing through the detection system types of liquid chromatography so there are different types of liquid chromatography that is paper chromatography column chromatography liquid in column chromatography we have liquid 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 solid gel permeation and ion exchange types of liquid chromatography are paper chromatography column chromatography in column chromatography we have liquid and liquid liquid and solid gel permeation and ion exchange and we have thin film chromatography we have thin film chromatography so different types of chromatography are paper chromatography column chromatography then liquid 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 solid gel permeation and ion exchange and thin film chromatography thin film chromatography thin film chromatography then uh, let us see i'll just explain in a very short uh, no, note about your different types of thin film th liquid chromatographics different types of liquid chromatography first one is your paper chromatography paper chromatography is a type of uh, planar chromatography whereby chromatography produces procedures are run on a specialized paper pa paper chromatography is a type of uh, planar chromatography where chromatography procedures are run on a specialized paper you use a paper a specialized paper is used so uh, it is in short it is called as pc that is paper chromatography it is considered to be the simplest and most widely used of chromatographic techniques because of its applicability to isolation identification and quantitative determination of organic and inorganic compounds so paper chromatography where you are going to use a specialized paper uh, it is considered to be the simplest and most widely used of the chromatographic uh, uh, techniques because of its applicability to isolation identification and quantitative determination of organic and inorganic compounds so in paper chromatography support material consists of a layer of cellulose highly saturated with water a layer of cellulose which is highly saturated with water a layer of cellulose highly saturated with water in this method a thick filter paper comprised the support and water drops settled in its pores made up the stationary liquid phase so the stationary liquid phase is nothing but the filter which is moistened 
water droplets settled in its pores made by the stationary liquid phase. Then the mobile phase consists of appropriate fluid placed in a developing tank. You have a developer or a tank, the mobile phase consists of an appropriate fluid placed in a developing tank. Uh, paper chromatography is a liquid liquid chromatography. It is a liquid liquid chromatography. Paper chromatography is a liquid liquid chromatography. It is a liquid liquid chromatography. So, this is your uh, figure of the paper chromatography. You have a solvent. The solvent is placed in a tank or, uh, or in a beaker. You can see the beaker there. The solvent is placed in the beaker. And then we have the chromatography paper, specialized paper. Uh, and the start line you can see how the uh, solvent is moved to the upper part of the paper. So, direction of motion of the solvent. So, you have the liquid phase and the um, stationary liquid phase and, and uh, the solvent will be moving upwards. So, this solvent is movable mobile phase. Okay, movable mobile phase. Though the principle of separation, principle of paper chromatography is, principle of separation is mainly partition rather than adsorption. We are going to use the principle of partition rather than absorption. Substances are distributed between a stationary phase and a mobile phase. Cellulose layers in the filter paper contains moisture which act as stationary phase. As I told you, the paper is dipped, uh, is wetted in other words, it is moistened. So, this moistened paper acts as a stationary phase. Now, you have the mobile phase which is nothing but the organic solvent of, or the buffer which is placed in the beaker. So, the developing solution travels up the stationary phase carrying the sample with it. So, it will be carrying the sample with it. The component of the sample will separate readily according to the how strong they adsorb onto the stationary phase versus how readily they dissolve into the mobile phase. So, your sample is introduced into the solvent. When they are introduced into the solvent, what happens? This sample will be, components of the sample will be readily separated according to how strongly they adsorb onto the surface of the stationary phase versus how they readily they dissolve in the mobile phase. How readily they dissolve in the mobile phase. So, this is the schematic, this is the procedure how uh, the paper chromatography appears. You can see a paper is dipped into that uh, container, cylindrical container and uh, you have the solvent inside it. The solvent is, is placed inside it. So, different samples will be coming out. So, you can observe by the color of the sample, you can identify the uh, no, the nature of the material pres present. Suppose it is a leaf stain, you can see chlorophyll B, chlorophyll A, then xanthrophyll, then uh, carotene. RF value is nothing but retention factor, retention factor value. Okay, how, how long it is retained? Based upon the value of RF, you can identify the component present in the sample, component present in the sample. So, we will, I will explain in brief the principle of paper chromatography. In paper chromatography, the sample mixture is applied to the piece of filter paper. So, you have the filter paper, the sample mixture is applied to the piece of filter paper. The edge of the filter of the paper is immersed into the solvent. As I shown you in the previous slide, you have seen the uh, uh, test tube or a container in that the paper is dipped. So, you are immersing first the sample mixture is applied to the piece of filter paper. The edge of the paper is immersed in the solvent and the solvent moves up the paper by capillary action. After the development, the solvent front is marked and then left to dry in a dry cabinet or an oven. So, colorless and lights detected by staining with reagents such as iodine, vapor or uh, ninhydrin. We have, if the agents, if the sample is having colorless uh, uh, agents, they are detected by staining with the reagents such as uh, iodine vapor or ninhydrin, etc. So, what is this retention factor? Some compounds 
in a mixture some compounds in a mixture travel almost as far as a solvent does some stay much closer to the baseline the distance travel relative to the solvent is a constant for a particular compound as long as other parameters such as the type of the paper and the exact composition of the solvent are constant so the distance travel relative to the solvent is called the rf value the distance travel relative to the solvent is called the rf value retention factor value thus in order to obtain a measure of the extent of movement of the component in a paper chromatographic experiment rf value is calculated what is this rf value uh, for each separated component in the developed chromatogram you can as i as we have seen earlier we have chlorophyll a chlorophyll b then uh, xanthophyll okay you can identify them by their colors if they are colorless then you use reagents which which when applied to them you get a specific you can identify the specific components so the rf value is a number that is defined as the distance travel by the component from the application point the distance travel by the component from the application point so this will clearly this slide will clearly Uh, let you know how it uh, how the rf value is calculated see the spotting line that is a sample spot beginning of the spotting line how it is when it is moving upwards uh, and it's uh, it finally reaches the point a the solvent will start from the starting point of the paper and it will reach to the end of the paper filter paper but the component of the sample that is a it will be retaining inside it will take its own retention time okay so rf factor is calculated by distance travel by the component divided by distance travel by the solvent so it is nothing but equal to a by b suppose a, co a component uh, as shown in the figure that ball is moving from the baseline spotting line to the value a so the distance traveled by the component is a the distance traveled by the solvent is b so rf factor is a by b in this way you can identify based on the rf value of calculating the retention factor value you can identify the component of the sample so this is a paper chromatography it is a liquid chromatography it is a type of liquid chromatography so coming to the applications of paper chromatography paper chromatography it is easy to check the control of purity of pharmaceuticals they are used to check the control of purity of pharmaceuticals they are used for detection of adulterants detection of adulterants adulterants what are adulterants adulterants, adulterants are nothing but substances Uh, which are within other substances such as food or cosmetics or paracetam paraceuticals pharmaceuticals i'm sorry fuels or other chemicals that comprises the safety or effectiveness of the said substance which compromises the safety or effectiveness of the substance that means some substances which are added which are within other substances like food and cosmetics or pharmaceuticals or fuels or other chemicals those are uh, th those components are called adulterants they are used for detection of adulterants they are used to detect the contaminants in foods and drinks in the study of ripening and for fermentation for detection of drugs and dopes in animals and humans and also in the analysis of cosmetics as i told you in the analysis of cosmetics analysis of reaction mixtures in biochemical labs and analysis of reaction mix mixtures in biochemical labs so applications of paper chromatography so paper chromatography it is used to check the control of purity of pharmaceuticals it is used to check the control of purity of pharmaceuticals for detection of adulterants detect the contaminants in foods and drinks in the study of ripening and fermentation the, then in uh, for detection of drugs and dopes in animals and humans in analysis of cosmetics analysis of uh, the reaction mixtures in biochemical 
labs in biochemical labs then advantages and limitations of paper chromatography uh, the advantages are it is a simple and rapid process paper chromatography requires very less qualitative material quantitative material very less amount of sample is enough to identify the components present in the sample so it is a simple and rapid process it requires very less quantitative material then paper chromatography is cheaper compared to other chromatographic methods both unknown inorganic as well as organic compounds can be identified by paper chromatographic method both unknown inorganic as well as organic compounds can be identified by paper chromatography method paper chromatography does not occupy much space compared to other analytical methods or equipments and it is an excellent it has excellent resolving power and the limitations are large quantity of the sample cannot be applied on the paper chromatography and in quantitative analysis paper chromatography is not effective it is not e effective in quantitative analysis okay and complex mixtures cannot be separated by paper chromatography and it is less accurate compared to hplc or hptc hplc is high power high high performance liquid chromatography or high performance the thin layer chromatography so they, it is less accurate when compared to hplc or hptc hptlc okay so it is simple and rapid process paper chromatography requires very less quantitative material paper chromatography is cheaper compared to other chromatographic methods both unknown inorganic as well as organic compounds can be identified by paper chromatography method paper chromatography does not occupy much space compared to other analytical methods or equipments it has excellent resolving power and the limitations are large quantity of the sample cannot be applied on paper chromatography in in quantitative analysis paper chromatography is not effective complex mixture cannot be separated by paper chromatography and it is less accurate compared to hplc high performance liquid chromatography or high performance HPTLC that is high performance thin layer chromatography then coming to the second type of chromatography that is we have column chromatography column chromatography column chromatography it is it is a technique in which the substance that is separated are introduced onto the top of a column packed with an absorbent you have a column the column is packed with an absorbent pass it through the col and uh, this uh, uh substance is allowed to pass through the column at different rates that depends on the affinity of each substance for the absorbent and for the solvent or solvent mixtures and are usually collected in solution as they pass from the column at different times so it is a solid to liquid technique in which the stationary phase is a solid and the mobile phase can be either a liquid or gas so column chromatography is a technique in which the substance is separated and introduced on to the top of the column packed with absorbent passed through the column at different rates that depend upon the affinity of each substance for the absorbent and for the solvent or solvent mixture and are usually collected in solution as they pass from the column at different times it is a solid liquid technique in which the stationary phase is a solid and mobile phase is a liquid or gas mobile phase is a liquid or gas so this is the figure of column cho chromatography you can see uh, the figure consists of a stationary phase in the figure we can see a column a column consisting of a stationary phase and your sample is loaded on the top of the Uh, stationary phase the stationary phase can be a solid then when the sample is loaded and you have the mobile phase either it may be a liquid or a gas so slowly the mobile phase pushes the sample into the column 
pushes the sample into the column material, into the stationary phase. So slowly the sample is being separated and you are going to get the resolved bands here. So you are going to get the eluted molecules outside. So forms of column chromatography. There are different forms of column chromatography. The two basic fundamental forms of column chromatography are liquid chromatography that is LC and gas chromatography that is uh, uh, GC. The most widely used forms of column chromatography are ad adsorption chromatography, partition chromatography, ion exchange chromatography and gel chromatography. So, we have two basic types of column chromatography is that is LC chromatography, liquid chromatography and gas chromatography. The most widely used forms of column chromatographies are adsorption chromatography, partition chromatography, ion exchange chromatography and gel, form gel chromatography. So, what is the principle of column chromatography? In column chromatography, the stationary phase is packed into a glass or a metal column. As, I, as, as we have seen in the, the, in the figure, we have a cylindrical, long cylindrical glass or metal column. So, the stationary phase is packed into the glass or metal column. The mixture of the analyte is then applied and the mobile phase, commonly referred to as the eluent, is passed through the column either by use of pumping system or applied gas pressure. So, the mobile phase that is the eluent is passed through the column either by the use of a pumping system or applied gas pressure. The stationary phase is either coated onto discrete small particles and packed into a column or applied as a thin film to the inside wall of the column. So, you have a column which is made of either glass or metal column. The stationary phase is packed into this column. Uh, it is coated onto the discrete small particles as in the form of a matrix and packed into the column or applied as a thin film to the inside wall of the column. The, the chromatographic column, uh, the stationary phase is packed inside that, inside the glass or metal column. How it is packed either? It is coated onto discrete small particles in the form of the matrix and packed into the column or applied as a thin film to the inside wall of the column. So, as the eluents flow through the column, the analytes separate on the basis of their distribution quotient and emerge individually in the eluent as it leaves the column. Okay? So, as the eluents flows through the column, the analytes separate on the basis of the distribution quotient as the eluents are nothing but the sample and the uh, mobile phase both when they come out, uh, the, come out of the column the analytes separate on the basis of the distribution quotients and emerges individually in the eluent as it leaves the column. They emerge out individually. They come out individually. So then the applications of column chromatography. So, what are the applications of column chromatography? Column chromatography is one of the most useful method for the separation and purification of both solids and liquids. Its major applications include separation of mixture of compounds, removal of impurities of purification process or isolation of active constituents, isolation of metabolites from biological fluids and estimation of drugs in formulation or crude extracts. So, these are the application areas of column chromatography, most useful method for uh, separation and purification of both solids and liquids. This method is used for separation of uh, and purification of both solids and liquids. So, separation of mixture of compounds removal of impurities or purification process, isolation of active constituents, isolation of metabolites from biological fluids, estimation of drugs in formulation or crude extracts. In formulation or crude extracts. Then what are the advantages of and limitations of column chromatography? 
advantages are any type of mixture can be separated by column chromatography any type of mixture then any quantity of mixture can be separated. whereas in the earlier we have seen that paper chromatography you cannot quanti quantifying uh, is not quantitative analysis is not that easy it is not uh, easy in case of paper chromatography but in column chromatography any quantity of mixture can be separated any type of mixture can be separated by column chromatography and wider choice of mobile faces are available and in preparatory type the sample can be separated and also it can be reused again and automation is possible in column chromatography in preparatory type the sample can be separated and again it can be reused and automation is possible in case of column chromatography but what are the limitations it is a time consuming method it takes a lot of time for all this process to take place more amount of solvents are required which may be expensive automation makes the uh, process uh, or the technique more complicated more automation more complicated the circuit and more costlier so these are the limitations so advantages of column chromatography is any type of mixture can be separated by column chromatography any quantity of mixture can be separated easily wider choice of mobile phases the sample can be separated and reused again automation is possible but the limitations are it is a time consuming method and more amounts of uh, solvents are required which may be expensive so automation makes the technique more com complicated and costly automation makes the technique more complicated and costly the last one is your thin layer chromatography thin layer chromatography can be defined as the method or it is a method of separation or identification of mixture of components into individual components by using finely divided absorbent that is either a solid or a liquid spread over a plate and that plate is called tlc plate and the liquid as a mobile face so thin layer chromatography it is a method of separation or identification of mixture of components into individual components by using finely divided absorbent by using finely divided absorbent that is solid or liquid spread over a plate you are using a plate a finely divided absorbent solid or liquid which is spread over a plate and the liquid as a mobile face the liquid acts as a mobile face the principle of thin layer chromatography thin layer chromatography is performed on a sheet of glass plastic or aluminium foil you have seen the in the figure you have seen a container containing a glass plate glass or plastic or aluminium foil and it is coated with thin layer of absorbent material that layer is usually either silica gel or aluminium oxide or cellulose is used this layer of absorbent is known as the stationary phase this layer of absorbent is known as the stationary phase after the sample has been applied on the plate a solvent mixture known as the mobile phase is drawn up the plate via the capillary action is drawn up the plate via the capillary action because different analytes ascend the tlc plate at different rate separation is achieved okay you have a, a glass a beaker in that a glass sheet of glass or plastic or aluminium foil is coated with thin layer of absorbent material usually silica gel or aluminium oxide or cellulose is used this layer of absorbent is known as the stationary phase after the sample has been applied onto the plate a solvent or a solvent mixture is drawn up uh, by capillary action by the plate because different analytes ascend the tlc plate at different rate separation is achieved separation is achieved it is thus based on the principle of adsorption it is thus based on the principle of adsorption chromatography or partition chromatography or combination of both depending upon the absorbent 
its treatment and nature of solvents employed depending on absorbent its treatment and nature of the solvents employed the components with more uh, affinity towards stationary phase travels slower components with less affinity towards stationary phase travels faster so once separation occurs the individual components are visualized as spots at a respective level of travel on the plate the nature or character is identified by means of suitable detection techniques we are going to use different different detection techniques uh, to detect the type of component that is being eluted that is being uh, uh, present in the sample so this is the procedure of a thin layer chromatography tlc it is called you the uh, as i told you earlier in the thin layer a tlc plate is placed inside the solvent after 5 minutes what happens the uh, particles uh, the components of the particles will be uh, moving upwards depending on the absorbent it, they will be moving upwards and slowly they'll be you they'll be moving upwards after 10 minutes they are totally they'll be reaching the top of your plate it will be reaching the top of the plate so once components with less affinity will to uh, affinity which are having more affinity towards the stationary phase they travel slower and components with less affinity towards stationary phase they travels faster once the separation occurs the individual components are visualized as spots at respective levels so you can find out the retention factor that is nothing but distance traveled by the component by distance traveled by the solvent the solvent is is reaching to the top and its the distance is b and the tra distance traveled by the component is a so retention factor is, is is nothing but the ratio of distance traveled by the component to the distance traveled by the solvent so it will be a by b so this is the procedure to find out the components present in the sample using thin layer chromatography using thin layer chromatography then the applications of thin layer chromatography is in monitoring the progress of reactions they are used for identifying compounds present in a given mixture they are used to determine the purity of a substance they are used for analyzing ceramides and fatty acids they are used for detection of part pesticides or insecticides in food and water it is used for analyzing the dye composition of fibers in forensics then in assaying the radio chemical purity of uh, radio pharmaceuticals then in identification of medicinal plants and their constituents medicinal plants and their constituents so these are the application areas of thin film or thin layer chromatography then coming to the advantages of thin layer chromatography it is a simple process with a very short development time and it helps with visualization of separated compounds spots easily it helps in isolating of most of the compounds and separation process is faster and selectivity for compounds is higher and it is a cheaper chromatographic technique and the purity standards of the given sample can be assessed very easily you can assess the purity of the sample very easily using this process because it is a cheaper and it is a simple process and it has short development time and uh, you can visualize the uh, compounds the uh, the components present in the sample very easily then there are certain limitations of thin film chromatography that is tlc process it cannot tell the difference between enantiomers and isomers what are enantiomers enantiomers are nothing but they are chiral molecules that are mirror images of one another and uh, these molecules are non superimposable on one another whereas isomers are molecules or polyatomic ions with identical chemical formula but distinct arrangements in their atoms so you cannot differentiate between enantiomers and isomers then there is another uh, disadvantage or limitation with this process is in order to identify specific compounds the rf value uh for the compounds of interest must be known well in advance you must know the value of retention factor to identify the components 
because each each component has its own retention factor so tlc plates do not have long stationary faces therefore the length of the separation is limited compared to other chromatographic techniques other chromatographic techniques then these are the types of liquid chromatography we have seen and lastly i would like to uh, tell you the advantages of liquid chromatography liquid chromatography is a very high speed analysis is possible using liquid chromatography and it has higher resolution hvlcs are columns can be reused without repacking or regeneration great reproducibility due to close control of parameters and easy automation of the instrument is possible uh, for data analysis and adaptability to large scale preparative procedures is easy with liquid chromatography with liquid chromatography then there are certain limitations the major disadvantages with this type of chromatography is it is expensive when we go for automation the system entire system is costly and it is not portable and it requires experienced technicians to operate the system and it has only moderate throughput it has only moderate throughput if you wanted to analyze for example 100000 samples by using liquid chromatography and mass spectrometry it would be probably take about a year depending on how fast the run time takes of course the throughput doesn't matter if you are doing 5 to 10 samples but 10 100000 samples you need to analyze it will take about an year so it is a very uh, long process but in drug screening analysis thousands of samples can be done routinely so this is a major limitation with liquid chromatography applications of liquid chromatography are in the field of pharmaceutical industry to qualify drugs before they are released into the market they are used to find the molecular weights of uh, uh, different uh, compounds molecular weight determination and comparison then in water purification we are using this liquid chromatographic method and pre concentration of trace components pre concentration of trace components so to summarize our topic of discussion today we have studied about liquid chromatography liquid chromatography is a chromatographic it is a physical method of separation of components of mixtures by distribution between two phases where one of the phase that is a uh, mobile phase is a liquid then it is called liquid chromatography then the most oldest uh, uh, form of chromatographic process is hplc that is high performance high pressure liquid chromatography high pressure liquid chromatography the we have studied about the block diagram of liquid chromatography where the components in liquid chromatography are mobile phase system pump programmer sample valve column detector and recorder data processing and printer when we see the construction of all these uh, uh, we see when we see the operation of a liquid chromatograph in the liquid chromatograph the mobile phase is a high pressure liquid and the stationary phase can be either a liquid or a solid the sample to be analyzed is ejected into the high pressure chromatographic column by using a syringe the sample is made to move throughout the column by using high pressure liquid so the chromatographic column is maintained at a at an elevated temperature the various components of the sample are fractioned due to their passage through the column the detection system senses these components as they elute from the column and produce a signal which is proportional to the amount of the solute that is passing through the detection system amount of solute that is passing through the detection system we have seen the different types of chromatography that is the paper chromatography column chromatography and thin film or thin layer chromatography then lastly the advantages of uh, liquid chromatography or they it is a high speed the speed of analysis is higher and its resolution is higher and the hplc columns can be reused without repacking or regeneration 
then uh, they are having great greater reproducibility and easy automation of the instrument operation and data analysis is possible using liquid chromatography and adaptable to large scale pre preparative procedures whereas coming to the limitations the major disadvantages is it is expensive it is not portable it requires uh, experienced technicians and has only moderate throughput the applications of liquid chromatography are uh, in pharmaceutical industries and also uh, to identify uh, to qualify drugs used in pharmaceutical industries then in mo in molecular weight determination and comparison in water purification and pre concentration of trace compounds so with this we have studied about liquid chromatography the components of liquid chromatography the types of liquid chromatography advantages and limitations of liquid chromatography and finally the applications of liquid chromatography so with this i would like to end my presentation today